in this video, which is going to be our last about Euler characteristic, um, we're going to talk about Euler characteristic for higher genus grass. Higher genus meaning not planar. Um, so we know how to calculate the Euler characteristic of a planar graph, whether it's connected or disconnected, doesn't matter. Um, so hopefully you've read in the textbook about what a two-cell embedding is. Um, but if not, a two-cell embedding is basically an embedding where every face um, can be contracted to a single point. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second. Um, but the theorem goes, if you have a two-cell embedding of a connected graph on some surface, S sub k, right, where k is either 0, which would mean the plane, or 1, which would mean the torus, or 2, which would mean the double torus, then the Euler characteristic is given by our normal formula, right, vertices minus edges plus faces, and now it's going to be equal to 2 minus 2 times whatever the genus of the surface you're on is. Right? So for example, if you're in the plane, then k would be 0, and this would be our regular version, right? Vertices minus edges plus faces is 2. Right? But if you're on the torus, for example, right, it should be vertices minus edges plus faces equals 0, because k would be 1. Right? Or if you're on the double torus, it should be negative 2, and so forth. So we're just going to look at a couple of examples of this. Um, so let's start by finding the Euler characteristic of K33 embedded on S1. So first we need a two-cell embedding of K33 on the torus, and then we're going to use our formula. Okay, so we've done this before. So let's put K33, we're going to have our six cycle. And then we're going to do this one, and then we still need to get these two and these two. So these two will connect by going through the hole, and these two will connect by going around the hole, right? So maybe this is edge 1, and this is edge 2. Right, now what does that look like on the torus? Just a quick refresher. It looks like this. All right, and then here's our vertical edge on the interior. And then these ones that are going top to bottom, that means going through the hole in the torus. Right, and then this one going left to right, that's going around the hole in the torus. Now, this is a two-cell embedding, and you have to be careful about what constitutes a two-cell embedding when you're working in the identification space. So we're going to see an example in just a second of a graph that is not a two-cell embedding, and for example, why it isn't. Um, so one way to think about whether or not it's two-cell is you want to think about drawing a circle, um, and so you say you draw some circle. If you can contract that circle down to a point, so basically just like squish it all in, right? You're just taking everything in and it can, there's nothing stopping it from turning into a single dot, then it's a two-cell embedding if that's true for every circle you can draw, which we'll get to that in just one second. Okay, so now let's do our formula here, vertices minus edges plus faces. So vertices, 6, edges, 9, and how many faces are there? I'll give you a hint, it's not 6. So you might want to pause the video and think about that for a second. Okay, so this is one face, and this is another face, and then this is a different face, but this face, right, this line is the same as this line. So these are the same face, right? It's sort of wrapping around, and then it comes out here, and this is the same face. Similarly, it can go up from the top and come out the bottom, and this is the same face, and it can go left and come out here, and this is the same face. Okay, so even though in the, <clears throat> in the um, identification space it looks like these are four different faces, they're actually just one face. Okay, and it's easier to see if you come over and think about it over here, right? So like maybe you start uh, in this area, and you can wrap all the way around, right, and pick up all this, and then you can wrap around the underside, right, and then you get on the back side, which will give you all of this, all of this, all of this. So really all that on the outside is just one big face. Okay, so three faces, which gives us zero 
Is that what we expected to see? Yes, it is, right? Because we wanted to have 2 minus 2k, which for us, in this case, because we're dealing with the torus, that's S1, right? So 0 is what we were expecting. Okay, so let's try this again. So let's find the Euler characteristic of K4, the complete graph on four vertices embedded on the sphere. Now K4 is a planar graph, but that doesn't mean you can't draw it on the sphere. Okay, so, or on the, the torus. Um, so we want to find the Euler characteristic of K4 embedded on the torus. So let's try two different ones. So first, let's think about what happens if we just use one of our sort of regular versions of K4. Right, so that's an embedding. The question is whether it's a two-cell embedding. Okay, and then down here, for this one, maybe we'll do something like this. Okay, so these are both, these are two embeddings of K4, the same graph, on the same surface, but one of them is a two-cell embedding and one of them is not a two-cell embedding. So let's think about what's happening. So this one we're just going to sort of draw on the face of the inner tube, nothing getting fancy, we're not going through the hole, we're not going around the hole, we're just throwing it right there on the face. And then this one, we are going to get a little bit fancy. Right, this edge that runs top to bottom goes through the hole. And then this edge that goes left to right goes around the hole. Now let's think about what's happening here in the number of vertices, edges, and faces. Okay, so here, this will be four vertices, six edges, and down here, it's also going to be four vertices and six edges, right? Because the graph doesn't change. It's going to be four vertices and six edges because that's what K4 has. The question is how many faces we create with a particular embedding. So in this case, how many faces do we have? One, two, three, four, which would give us four, which is going to give us negative two. Okay, and in this case, we have one, just two faces, okay? Because again, this one on the inside is one face, right? Maybe we'll do an F1. And then this one is a second face, but this face sort of bleeds to the top, right? Which comes out down here, and it bleeds to the right, which comes out over here, and this bleeds up, right? And this bleeds right. And so all of that's just a second. Those are just two faces as opposed to four faces. Okay, now which of these is the two-cell embedding? Well, it's this one, right? I mean, this is the one that, this is what we're supposed to get, right? We're supposed to get zero, and we do. And here we're supposed to get zero, but we ended up getting negative two, which is no good. Now, why isn't this a two-cell embedding? So remember when I talked about drawing circles, and you want to be able to contract those circles down to points. Well, where, for example, can I draw a circle on this torus um, that can't be contracted to a point? So I should, I should emphasize here that when I'm talking about drawing circles, I mean drawing circles completely contained in one face. So, for example, I can draw a circle that runs through the hole, and now I can't contract this circle without making a pinch in my inner tube, right? A pinch in this torus, which is not allowed. So that's one example of such a circle. Or I could go around the hole like this. And now I can't contract this circle either, right? Because if I make it small, eventually it's just going to get around the outside of this hole. But I'm not allowed to contract that hole. I need that hole to be there for this to be the torus. Okay? But you can see here, I've got edges preventing those two situations in this embedding, right? This this edge goes through the hole like this. That prevents me from drawing a circle around the hole, right? Because I would have to cross this edge, which is not allowed. And then this one that sort of goes around the hole prevents me from drawing a circle through the hole like this, right? Because I would have to cross this edge, which is not allowed. 
Okay, so hopefully you read about two-cell embeddings, but if you didn't, this would be a nice little primer about what is and is not a two-cell embedding. So this is a two-cell embedding. And in particular, you want to be able to contract circles down to points. Or, said differently, you want to be able to contract the faces down to points. Okay, so this is our, na our last sort of leap um, with Euler characteristic. So now we know how to calculate Euler characteristic for planar graphs of all types and then connected graphs of all types, right? So, for example, K33, right, is not planar, but it is connected, so we can still calculate the Euler characteristic. And in this case, it happens to be zero.